I've been interested in nuclear for a very long time because my great grandfather was a top nuclear physicist on the Manhattan Project. Wow. So that's, you know, just a huge family legacy. Um, you know, one of my most like prized possessions of all time is uh, my great grandmother, his wife uh, at my dinner table in, uh, in Colorado, back when I lived in Colorado, um, she was talking about, you know, growing up and started talking about her father's, you know, Ford Model T and, and this kind of stuff. And I turned on my Apple Watch recorder mm -hmm. um, and we just started talking. She talked about um, living at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So this city that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers just created overnight in the woods of Tennessee. They drew a circle on a map in Tennessee. Uh, it was all just, you know, a mountain ridge called Oak Ridge. And they said, uh, we're going to put a city there. And uh, over the course of three years, it grew from, you know, a bunch of trees to uh, a town of 60,000 people. And uh, that's always been just an incredible inspiration, just, you know, hearing about them living there and uh, raising children there even um, in the midst of this, you know, great national project uh, that is, I think, just a testament to to the energy of our nation that, that we can, you know, put something together of that scale. Mm -hmm. So that was always an inspiration to me growing up, um, nuclear specifically. So there's more to say about that, and I'll, and I'll say more about that in a little bit. But yeah, so uh, the company that I'm doing now is is Valor Atomics. Um, that is a Lord of the Rings reference. Uh, and our goal with Valor is to uh, reduce the price of electricity in the United States for American homes and factories. Factories especially uh, is a huge goal of mine. I want people to have cheap power to manufacture goods in the US. Um, this is something that I think people underrate and underappreciate is that electrical input cost is sometimes the place that competitiveness breaks down with other countries. So China's uh, electrical cost is sitting at around seven cents a kilowatt hour, and the US is sitting at like 12.5 cents per kilowatt hour. So there's like a natural advantage built in there even you know outside of the labor and tooling and factories and all that kind of stuff that china has or other countries have just the energy cost alone is this like huge component into the cost of any physical good mm -hmm. um, and so yeah I, I want to massively reduce energy costs in the united states and the way i want to do that is with nuclear power but unlike any other nuclear startup that i know of uh, i want to do it by actually synthesizing hydrocarbons so hydrocarbons are uh, you know, like they sound like hydrogen and carbon. We're talking about petroleum. We're talking about natural gas. Uh, coal is an example of a heavier hyd hydrocarbon. And uh, these are incredibly energy dense liquids uh, or gases in the case of nat gas that power 90% of our world. Uh, our cars use them, our planes use them. If you're getting electricity, you know, here, actually there's a fair amount of nuclear around here, but most of the United States is powered by burning natural gas and turbines. So these hydrocarbons really, you know, propel our world forward. They're how we eat and how we live. And uh, I think they're a fantastic thing. I want them to be cheaper, though. Uh, I want them to be 10 times cheaper. And I think we can do that by synthesizing them with nuclear power. The rest of the project, um, I think, was actually pretty organic, where I just started looking into how do we reduce electricity costs. And the particular reason I was interested in that is I started looking at the development of artificial intelligence and robotics and started thinking about like, what does the global economy look like in five, 10, 15, 20 years when artificial intelligence has you know reached a certain point and robotics have reached a certain point. Um, I'm sort of predicting, projecting that the, the cost of power is gonna become even more important than it is now. It's already important, but it's gonna become 10 times more important because if you think about like how our factories are gonna change, Tesla's already doing this, they've got you know, their Optimus robots walking around moving boxes, like they're starting to actually use robotics on the floor. Um, what that means is like physical goods are going to be less about labor cost and they're gonna be more about power cost. Hmm. Um, and so I think if the United States wants to be competitive, which of course we do, this is the greatest nation on earth, so we should win, um, we're gonna need cheaper power. And so that's something I started looking into five years ago and, and uh, Valor I think is the sort of output of I think this is my sixth or seventh iteration of how we fix electrical costs in the U.S. And uh, I'm really happy with this one. So why is, um, generally speaking, American power um, per kilowatt hour more expensive yeah. uh, than some of these other nations? Like, is it 
is it regulation surely it isn't a lack of resources no like what's the what's the deal that's a great question uh when i was walking into your studio there's a um there's a light post out there and it's got a poster on the light post and it says tell the epa to act now add power station regulations and uh -huh. it's got a picture of smokestacks um with you know carbon coming out the smokestack and uh it's got a phone number to call and i'm not sure that maybe they got like a march going or something like mm -hmm. that um that's a great picture of why electricity costs more uh, here than it does in china uh, if you look at sort of the philosophy between the two nations um china has no qualms about burning coal as fast as they get it um as dirty as they get it they have no qualms about drilling as much natural gas as they can get their hands on uh refining oil and burning it like no qualms uh the united states obviously like we have this sort of natural national conscience about like atmospheric gases and um and heat and all these sorts of things uh which china always is sort of signaling and sort of virtue signaling toward that but uh there's not much behind it like you know 40 47 percent of all coal plants that have been turned on in the last three decades are china's belt and road initiative going to african countries asian countries building new coal plants they're basically the only ones left who are building coal plants um so yeah like they have a they have a very different like moral philosophy around energy um they have no you know shame about energy and, and using it for transportation and food and whatever it needs to be used for um and then the secondary thing is like they're you know a, a command economy so like they can just order more plants to be built but i think it's actually the the bigger one is that like philosoph philosophical difference mm -hmm. and what's the mix of our um you know energy resources currently yeah. like you don't have to give exact numbers yes yeah, so generally speaking. about six or seven percent of our electrical uh, electricity generation in the u.s is nuclear uh, about 40 percent is burning natural gas and turbines um, i believe around 20 percent is hydroelectric um, there's a small amount of just like burning petrol um, uh, and there's just like a little bit of wind and solar so and has that has nuclear you know is 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 seven percent six or seven percent like the the highest it's ever been did we did we experience a a, a no more of so a boon in the past we or? have over the last 10 years um decreased our nuclear fleet by 10 percent and um actually we just turned on the first new nuclear power plant in the u.s uh a month ago in georgia uh, it's the first one we turned on in 30 years hmm. so we have not turned on a new nuclear power plant you know other than this one for 30 years and obviously we've shut some down in in that time because they retire eventually and if you look at uh the cost of that so they they just turned on a uh 1.1 uh, gigawatt uh nuclear power plant in georgia there's a twin that's coming alongside it that's another 1.1 so you're looking at 2.2 gigawatts and they spent 30 billion dollars to turn on 2.2 gigawatts of power capacity now you look at what China's doing, um, they are basically spending uh, $2 billion per gigawatt. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at $15 billion per gigawatt versus $2 billion per gigawatt. And that's the entire answer to why we aren't building more nuclear. 